want to know the single number that can predict how long and how well you'll live. It's not blood pressure. It's not the weight on the scale. It's not even your cholesterol. It's your VO2 max. I'm Janet McConnell, longevity wellness speaker with decades of experience helping people over 40 build strength, energy, and resilience. In this video, I will break down what VO2 max actually is, why it matters so much for aging well, and how you can improve yours starting today. VO2 max stands for maximal oxygen uptake. It's a measure of how much oxygen your body can use during intense physical activity. In plain English, it's like the horsepower for your body. The more oxygen you can use, the more energy you can generate and the more resilient your body becomes. So obviously VO2 max means better cardiovascular fitness, but also better endurance and yes, even better brain health. The tricky part is VO2 max naturally declines as we age, unless we train it. And most people never even try. Now let's get real. VO2 max is the one strongest predictor of lifespan and health span. We talk about a lot of other things on this channel that are also very key, but VO2 max is kind of the secret weapon. In fact, hard science shows that it's a better predictor of mortality than blood pressure, even smoking habits or diabetes. Why? because it reflects your body's ability to deliver oxygen to your muscles, your heart, and your brain. If that system is strong, you're not just surviving, you are thriving. Now, I know what you're thinking. That is something that only competitive athletes have to pay attention to, because that's going to help them win first prize, the gold medal, what have you. They care about performance. They care about being the fastest, lasting the longest, being the strongest. But for us, this isn't just about athletic performance. Just like lifting weights is no longer just for gym bros. This is about independence, about walking upstairs without feeling winded, about chasing your grandkids around the yard, traveling, dancing, playing golf, staying mentally sharp for decades or more. And you know what? VO2 max is trainable. It responds to effort and pays off hugely, especially later in life. There are two main types of exercise that move the needle, and there's lots of variations underneath these two types. The first one overall is a type of interval training. Interval training you know, low, high, low, high, back and forth, back and forth. So your heart and your lungs have to adjust up and down and get a little recovery time. So think short bursts of high intensity effort, like brisk walking up a hill or upstairs for 30 seconds, and then a slow recovery, and then repeat. Even 20 seconds fast, one minute slow, five times repeated can make a difference. You can also follow this pattern by stationary biking or a rowing machine. So if you want to try a different style, it doesn't have to all be walking or running. And the second type is zone two training. Zone two training, zone two means that that is the level at which you can carry on a conversation without getting out of breath, but you can't sing. <laughs> You wouldn't want to hear me sing anyway. That might make you run faster. <laughs> but it's one of those things where you're using oxygen, but you can gauge if you're in the right spot because you can carry on conversation. If you get going a little too fast and you're trying to talk and you get out of breath, slow down just a little bit. And then that pace can increase over time because your VO2 max increases. Something particular to zone two level cardio is that it improves mitochondria function and builds your aerobic base. Mitochondria, they are the power plants of your cells. They turn food into energy that your body can use. We want to take care of those guys. And don't forget, strength training supports your VO2 max by building muscles that actually use 
oxygen more efficiently. Your muscles are part of the engine. And as a side note, I had to learn this when I became a bodybuilding competitor. I just wanted to lift heavy. I didn't care about cardio. I thought it was kind of boring. I don't know. It was, I changed devices, changed methods, I indoors, outdoors. I just, ugh, I just didn't like it. So I wasn't motivated to do it. And I was in great shape just lifting until the day came when I upped my weights on my bar squatting. It was great. I could do it. But I gassed out after about six or seven reps. And my trainer said, well, do you like lifting that weight? Do you want to lift it for 10 or 12 reps? I was like, yeah. And he goes, you have to increase your cardio capacity because your muscles aren't getting oxygen fast enough and efficiently enough to keep going. So now will you do your cardio? <laughs> I was like, well, okay, if it'll help me be stronger, fine. So to this day, that is what motivates me to do VO2 max. Not for all the whys and scientific reasons I'm telling you. Some of you Love cardio anyway, so it's going to be a shoe-in. But for those of us who are a little more, I don't know, reticent, maybe that will be the fire under your feet. So how do you actually work this into your week? I mean, Janet, you're already asking me to strength train. You're already telling me to shop for the right vitamins and cook my food and all these things. I, like, how am I going to have time for this? Well, here's how it works. Here's a couple of ways you can approach it, uh, especially if you're over 40. So you can space these out over alternating days. So two short interval workouts per week. So you can do your strength training. Next day, do an interval. Next day, do strength train. You know, you can, you can alternate your days. So you're not having to do it all at once. So on your interval training day, you want to walk fast or bike hard for 20 or 30 seconds and then go easy for a minute. And then repeat that five to eight times. I know it works really well. I live in a hot climate and going outside in the middle of the day in the summer is asking a lot and it's kind of not even safe at some point. So I get on the, um, uh, the stationary bike and set my timer so it beeps. So I go really fast for 30 seconds and then slow for a minute and a half and then really fast for 30 seconds back and forth like that and just repeat it about I think about six or seven times is what I do and then the other thing you can do is two to three zone two sessions these would be very easy to fit in before or after your strength training because it's not super strenuous. It's more of a low intensity, sustained kind of cardio, your zone two. Remember, you have to be able to talk while you're doing this. So it could be a 30 minute walk, a bike ride, a steady activity where you can talk, but not sing. And then weave that in with your two to three strength workouts and build and maintain your muscle while you're also working on your heart and your oxygen, your VO2 max. And there's something that I've personally discovered. I, I mentioned earlier that I live in a hot climate and there are times in the year where it is just, it's not safe or practical to go outside. I love the early mornings in Arizona. They're beautiful, but there comes a point where it is a hundred degrees overnight. I know it sounds crazy, but before you laugh, you cold country people, you know what I'm talking about. You have a great part of the year when you can exercise outside and then there's a huge snowstorm, you're blizzarded out and it's just too cold and it's painful in your lungs to breathe because it's below freezing. So this same, I don't know, mindset kind of works for everybody in either a very hot or a very cold or a very wet climate. Sometimes we need a way to train VO2 max indoors. I've been using a Stairmaster lately for my cardio because I can go slow or fast, and, but I don't want to go so fast that I'm having to run because I really have to protect my knees. So I can do a pretty brisk climb 
where I'm placing my feet, not smashing my feet into the stairs. But I reached a point where it was just short of running. So it was as fast as I could go without making it impactful on my two knee replacements. And I thought, well, I can't just stop here. I didn't want to just stop improving. I've got a weighted vest. So I started doing, and I had to back the speed off and go a little slower because I had to get used to carrying 12 extra pounds on me. And then slowly started ramping that up. And that has made a big difference. And the thing that I noticed is that it gave me my VO2 max a serious push. And the bonus, that weight bearing quality to carrying a weighted vest is really good for bone density, bone muscle strength and bone density. It, it encourages calcification. So. Here's the generality. You don't have to run a marathon to have good VO2 max. You don't even have to go outside if the conditions don't allow. You just need to challenge your body where you are with what you have. I've had clients in their 70s and their 80s actually improve their VO2 max. And suddenly they are like scaring their family because they're walking out in front of them, walking faster and longer. They just started moving with intention. One woman who was age 74 told me she couldn't keep up on vacation hikes anymore and she loved travel. We started with simple intervals on her neighborhood hill. And then two months later, she not only kept up, she was in front of her silver sneaker group, leaving them in the dust. Small steps lead to strong strides. And VO2 max is not just for athletes. It's for all of us. If you're ready to boost your VO2 max, just start with adding one interval training this week. Just one. Call it good. See how you feel. Come back and tell me in the comments how it went. Coming up, if you've ever felt overwhelmed by conflicting nutritional advice, don't miss my next video. I'm sharing why I believe there is no such thing as the best longevity diet. Now, my healthy aging heroes, your lungs, your muscle, your heart, train them and they'll carry you farther for decades to come.